I got my third place in the latest MGE and in this video I will be maxing out the latest generation Archer Commander, a monitor. We will analyze the commander from the beginning to the end, we will answer to the questions that we had when this commander was previewed and we are going to shed some light over one or two mechanics regarding her skills. I will show you many testings, both in the open field and in a garrison situation, so you will have a clear picture on whether or not you should invest on her, and I will suggest you the best talents pairings and equipments for this commander. If you enjoy my Rise of Kingdoms analysis, please leave a like and consider supporting the channel by subscribing. It's 100% free and you can always unsubscribe later. Let's get started. Okay, I got my 60 sculptures right here. Let's go ahead and summon a monitor. With the legendary heads I got from my third place, I am able to max out the first skill already. While we level her up, let's have a quick recap. A monitor is an archer, garrison and support commander. As I said in the preview video, I love so much the choice of the support tree on an archer commander. Active skill Glorious Arrows deals direct damage to the target with a damage factor up to 1300 and up to 20% increased damage for the next 3 seconds. Second skill Line Breaker gives your archers 40% increased attack and 5% extra damage to infantry while taking extra 5% extra damage from cavalry. Third skill, Resilience of Tasseti, your archers get up to 20% extra defense and your attacks will remove all the attack enhancements of your target when you are serving as a garrison commander. This chance has a 10% probability of activations and can activate once every 10 seconds. Fourth skill, Akandaki's Wrath, when you take skill damage, you deal direct damage up to 800 damage factor up to 3 enemies in a forward facing fan shaped area. If you are serving in a garrison, you also have a 50% chance to deal another round of damage up to 500 damage factor plus a 20% chance to deal a third round of damage with a damage factor up to 400. This skill can trigger at most once every 10 seconds. Now, we already have three questions about the fourth skill that hopefully we will answer with our testings. One, is the entire effect of this skill activable every 10 seconds or it refers only to the second and third wave? Two, are the second and third wave also AOE or single target damage? Three, very important, which kind of skill damage will activate this effect? Active? passive, self-inflicted, AOE damage where you are not the primary target. It is probably true that the skill will activate if you are the direct target of an active skill. Will the fourth skill activate if you are not a primary target of a skill damage? For example, if you happen to be damaged by an AOE commander like YSG or Guan Yu and those commanders are not attacking you directly. And what about the passive skill damage? Can this skill's effect be triggered by a passive skill damage such as Alexander the Great's second skill? And finally, everyone is curious about Amani's synergy with Artemisia. After Artemisia casts her first active skill, she damages herself. Will that activate a monitor's skill effect? or not. Watch the video until the end to have a complete picture of this commander. Expertise skill Nubian Willpower, troops led by this commander are immune to silence. Active skills reduce the target's rage by 100 per second for 2 seconds, for a total of 200. This skill can trigger at most once every 10 seconds. As we suggested in our Discord uh, as soon as a monitor came out, this skill could open the door to a terrific pairing with Artemisia, because Artemisia silences herself when the rage bar reaches 80% and increases her damage by 50%. We also said that she would have kept the damage increase while being immune to silence, like it would happen if Artemisia were to be paired with Attila. I believe Dragothian has also made a video about this point and we will highlight this mechanic with Artemisia in our testing. For the open field, I will always keep a monitor primary. In a meta full of AoE commanders, in any game mode from Champions of Olympia to KVK and Ark of Osiris, you need some skill damage resistance. And support commanders work very well in this sense, also thanks to the extra rage they gain with Rejuvenate. There are talent trees that in some situations work better than others, that's why I will save your time and show you only the most relevant testings. If I test a monitor primary with the Artemisia secondary, it's implicit that if Artemisia were to be primary commander, the result would not be that great. 
So I will structure this testing part in the same way I structured my other testing videos. For example, in my Pakal Rally testing video, which you can check by clicking the card up on the top, when I highlighted the Pakal and Harold combo, I never showed the testings for Harold being primary in that context. And even if many asked in the comments about that pairing, Harold primary and Pakal secondary, you can see that nobody uses Harold primary with Pakal secondary, because the defense tree just works better. Of course, I don't want you to blindly trust what I say, I always invite you to make your own testings, because things can greatly change according to the specific situation, like the different support skills that you can find in a rock anthem, just to make an example, which could possibly favor more the archer rally compared to the garrison, and vice versa. That's why in the following testing round we will be in a neutral ground, the Ark of Osiris, which is a more balanced scenario where to test in at the moment, since the 200% extra attack was removed in favor of the bonus damage. Usually, for our rally and garrison situations, other than testing with the commanders naked without any equipment, we also pick up the best players with the best equipments we can, in order to take a look at the full potential of a pairing. Of course, Slaudi has one of the best equipments for archers, which you can see now on the screen, and he will be leading the defense. On the offensive side as well, we will always have fully or almost fully specialized equipments. And being this a garrison commander, we are interested in discovering the synergies with the most used garrison commanders out there. In a specific, Amani with YSS and Amani with Theodora. Amani with Artemisia will be considered as well, but first, I need to report that there is a bug in the mechanic of Amanitor when she's paired up with Artemisia. The fourth skill of Amani will start the 10 seconds cooldown, unfortunately, when Artemisia damages herself with the active skill. And during those 10 seconds, if Amani receives any skill damage, the effect of the fourth skill will not activate. Take a look here, for example, you can see Artemisia's self-damage on turn 11, then the Barbarian fires off the active skill and Amani does not activate the AoE damage, which is very bad considering that for now I had to scrap away all of my testings for Amanitor and Artemisia, both for Rally and Open Field, which I consider to be one of the best Open Field combos because of its versatility. Not to speak about the fact that there are two other minor bugs, in the specific the purple color glitch that appears when Amani fires off the AoE, which we have already seen in another Archer Commander when first released, Cyrus. And the fact that the fan shape AoE is slanted on the side and not precisely perpendicular to the Commander. I personally do not understand why Lilith does not take a little bit more time before releasing the Commanders. I suggest to just slow down the pace, make sure you test the Commander thoroughly, and then release them in the game. Anyway, continuing to speak about the AoE, as you can see from this footage, it can be triggered every time you get skill damage. First, of course, if you get active direct skill damage. Second, if you get AoE damage and you are not the primary target, but you are one of the collaterals. And third, if you get passive skill damage, such as in the case of Alexander the Great's second skill. I expected also the self-damage of Artemisia to trigger Amani's AoE, but for now, that's not the case. So, aside from the obvious bug present with the self-damage, we don't know yet if Lilith has in mind to make the skill activate even with Artemisia's self-damage, which I still remember being skill damage. Therefore, even if now I will show you the results we have had with Artemisia as well, consider that those can actually be better in the moment they fix the bugs we spoke about before. First, here we have Amanitor and Theodora versus Zhang Yu and Chandragupta. As we expected, also because of the extra damage taken by cavalry, this archer garrison cannot compete with the cavalry rally. Both the rally leader and the garrison leader have of course the same testing conditions and a top equipment. On the left side, you can see Slody's archer equipment, while on the right side you can see Jerry's cavalry equipment. The battle goes quickly in favor of Zhang Yu. In case of a reinforced rally, the cavalry will always trade positive, since both the normal attacks and the skill damage numbers are in favor of Zhang Yu, they are way higher. Very close result for a monitor and YSS with mostly archers and a few cavalry and infantry units in the garrison against the same cavalry combo. So nothing very relevant to report here. In case of a reinforced rally and garrison situation, the conclusion is the same as before, being the normal attacks and the skill damage numbers highly in favor of the cavalry rally. 
I believe that the best against this cavalry rally, which in my opinion you should not be garrisoning with archers anyway, will be Amani and Artemisia. Considering that this combo suffers from a bug, they could actually be able to pull out even a better result. We will test this again after the bugs get fixed, but anyway Zhang Yu will win 100%. Then we have Amani and Artemisia versus our best infantry rally, Pakal and Harold. On the left you can see the equipment for the garrison and on the right side you can see Stifler's equipment for the infantry. Again, please pick those results very carefully because Artemisia will perform better in the next future. Anyway, solid win for the archer garrison and the same happens in a reinforced rally and garrison scenario. Amani with Theodora and YSS both win soundly as well against Pakal and Harold, with some better results for Theodora, even if in a KVK scenario and a reinforced garrison, YSS will perform a better job. You always need to consider the fact that in a real KVK fight, there will always be players who put the wrong troops in the rally, and while Theodora prefers a single troop type when she's secondary to a specific troop type commander like Amani, YSS on the other hand will be real good with mixed troops thanks to the extra stats he gets. I lost my material with Ramses primary, but we did test also with Nebu primary, which is not the best choice, Ramses should go first because of the attack tree. Anyway, in both cases Amani does a real good job in defending against archers. In fact, any combo you use against Ramses and Nebu, so Amani and YSS, or Amani and Theodora, or Amani and Artemisia, will win no problem and give you also decent trades in a reinforced scenario. We also tested a monitor against Attila and Chandragupta and Attila and Takeda. Being a monitor's fourth skill only effective when she receives skill damage, and we know that Attila, Chandra and Takeda do not inflict any kind of skill damage, those combos will be real interesting and maybe Attila can come back for a moment in this meta. I will not show you the results because I want to wait for Lilith to fix the bugs with Artemisia and then I will make a follow-up video, but spoiler alert! They perform really well. Let's now take a look at some open field reports. In this context, Amani and Artemisia seems to be a great way to replace Artemisia and Tomiris, or Artemisia and Cyrus, or Artemisia and Nebu. The only thing I also suggested in my Discord after Artemisia was resetted was to keep Artemisia at 5515, because on the field the expertise skill is actually damaging you more. In a garrison scenario of course you will prefer to have Artemisia max, and you should, but in the open field I really suggest to try your luck with a few skill resets and try to skill your Artemisia up to 5515 and leave her there. On the side you will also save 310 sculptures, which is never bad. Another great solution will be to keep her as a secondary commander at 5500 and totally avoid to unlock her third and fourth skills. Take a look at this example, I am battling with my youtuber and OV friend Lubu, we have exactly the same statistics, same buffs, same civilization, same VIP level, same troop amount, I mean everything is equal. The difference is only that my Artemisia is 5515 and his Artemisia is 5500 with the third and fourth skill not unlocked. And surprise, he wins, both in troop remaining and of course in the trade-off of severely wounded units. Why is that? Simple, his skill cycle is faster because Artemisia will not silence his march. So if you invested in Artemisia before, I really hope you follow the suggestion posted on my Discord and did not max her back. I will keep my Artemisia at 5515 personally and have fun with her as a secondary commander to my Amanitor. Anyway, back to the field fights, I will now show you some reports. Here we have Guanyu and Alexander the Great versus Amanitor and Artemisia and she wins soundly both in the severely wounded units and in the troops remaining. Then we have Amanitor and YSG against Amanitor and Nebu and I personally win with 30.9 thousand severely wounded versus 39.3 thousand. Then we have Ramses and YSG against Amanitor and YSG with 30 thousand severely wounded on my side and 53 thousand severely wounded on his side. And I do have to say that Ramses and YSG as of now is still a super solid archer combo for the open field. Both for the AoE potential and for the fact that Ramses, even if he doesn't have AoE, is very resistant to swarm, so if he gets swarmed you have skill damage resistance. Then we tried Amanitor and Ramses against Ramses and YSG, and Ramses and YSG still wins with 33.5 thousand severely wounded on his side and 40.6 thousand severely wounded on my side. 
I do remember that all the commanders we are using in this test are maxed out. Then we have Zhang Yu and William against a monitor and YSG. And not a surprise, a monitor and YSG gets totally destroyed by Zhang Yu. For now, those are the most important tests that I feel like showing you. As soon as the bugs will be fixed, we will be free to expand our testing field and try out a monitor and Artemisia in a group fight situation, which is what we are most interested in. Many players are trying to find a place for their Artemisia and they don't know yet if they should invest in a monitor or not. I think a monitor is a solid choice and will be 100% part of the new open field meta, but before before showing you some group fight and break them down together, I want to see how things will evolve, especially if Artemisia's self damage will be considered relevant for Amani's fourth skill effect. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for a second part both on new rally testings and open field, and also another chapter dedicated entirely to the new Archer rallying commander, Gilgamesh. I remember that you can support the channel for free just by leaving a like and subscribing. It's 100% free and you can always unsubscribe later. I will see you on the next one. Ciao!